Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for my channel. Today we have a Kings of War battle report. This is a uh, 2200 point game of Kingdoms of Man versus the Abyssal Dwarves. And the scenario is Scour. Uh, those of you unfamiliar with Scour, it is a new uh, scenario in the 2017 Clash of Kings comp pack that is basically just Pillage. For all intents and purposes, you can just read it like Pillage for this game. Uh, here is my army. This is the second game of a three-game one-day event uh, it played over in Omaha, Nebraska. So I have my display board out for a change. Uh, my army is as follows. I am playing Kingdoms of Man. I <laughs> misspelled of, but that's cool. Uh, two shield wall troops, a horde of foot guard with the Brew of Haste, a horde of heavy pike block, Brew of Strength, knights in a regiment uh, with Caterpillar Potion, two Berserker regiments, one of them with the Fire Oil item, a Archibusu troop with the piercing arrows, a beast of war uh, with a ballista upgrade, three siege artillery, one army standard bearer, one war uh, with the warbow of Kaba, a general or two generals, excuse me, uh, both mounted on horses, one with the blade of slashing and one with the mace of crushing. And finally, to round it all out, we have a wizard with a horse, a banechant upgrade, lightning bolt swap, and the inspiring talisman. <coughs> My opponent's army is, <coughs> excuse me. As follows, he's playing the Abyssal Dwarves, so he has three Gargoyle troops, uh, a Decimator in regiment form, uh, two regiments of Abyssal Halfbreeds, two hordes of Abyssal Grotesques, one of them has Caterpillar Potion, one of them has the Helm of Confidence, two Katsuhan, however you want to say that, Rocket Launcher, uh, one Overmaster on Great Abyssal Dragon with the Blessing of the Gods, and two half-breed champions, one of them with Boots of the Seven Leagues, that is the um, uh, 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 Vanguard item, I believe. And the other one is the Scrying Gem. So we'll go out to deployment here. <clears throat> uh, from left to right, he's got his Abyssal uh, half-breed champion dragon, dragon guy. We'll just say that for now. <clears throat> um, back in the corner, next to him he's got one of his half-breed champions. Then he has another half-breed champion, <clears throat> two rocket launchers, uh, Decimator Regiment. In the middle, he's got his two regiments of half-breeds. Uh, and in front of them, he has one of his troops of harpies. And on the far end, um, he has two troops of harpies. And then behind them, the two hordes of grotesques. Me, on my deployment, um, this would be left to right. Uh, general... Um, then I have my Berserkers, I have a Archibusers in f not the shield wall, uh, in front of my Pikes, my Army Standard Bearers over there. Um, hanging out on the wall there are my um, Foot Guard, behind my Foot Guard are all my guns, my artillery. In front of the Foot Guard are the um, shield wall troop. Behind the wall are my Archibusers, uh, my Wizards in front of their, up in front of my uh, next and then uh, behind my wizard is the berserkers and then on the far far end for me I have my knights um, towed into the woods a general and my beast of war so this is the overall picture of deployment I put a star on each of the tokens since this is scour and not to uh, ruin anyone's surprises uh, nobody destroys any tokens so you can just treat scour like pillage the rest of this game but um, so the overall look here is I plan to ignore those two tokens on the bottom and try to take uh, three or four of the tokens in the middle. Um, I'm sure my opponent is thinking of a similar strategy, but see how it goes. So uh, turn one, um, turn one, I get the choice, I think. I think I get the choice. So I, I take it. If I didn't get the choice, he gave it to me. That's generally how that goes. So, um, on this side here, you can see I move up. I move my. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I move my. Maybe I move my beast. Um, I move my knights. Everyone's just moving up a little bit. Um, I'm making a point to always stay over 16 inches out of range of those decimators. Being a uh, fellow dwarf player, I know the limitations of a dwarf movement combined with breath attack. So we're just inching up. I'm gonna lightning bolt, um, and just you know, pop off a couple shots here and there. Um, on the other side, I move up similarly. Um, I'm not in any hurry to engage him. I've got him pretty well outranged. His his rocket launchers are pretty decent, but um, my my artillery is 
probably a little better. <clears throat> uh, in shooting, I get pretty lucky. Um, my uh, Ballista on my Beast of War pops 3 damage on his Flyer, on his Dragon, so that's pretty good. Um, and my Wizard gets a damage off on his War Machine, which is, you know, okay. Um, I think my Warbow of Kaba hits the Harpies, and then I get a good rock um, landing on his Abyssal, Abyssal Grotesques, which also works pretty good. Um, so that's what it looks like after that, so I just moved on up. Abyssal turn one, he moves up, um, not super aggressively, um, but maybe he's like me, just seeing what's going on. So you can see everything just kind of slides up a little bit. Uh, on the other side, um, again, not much moved. Um, over here, he hides his he hides his dragon and his uh, half breed champion behind this uh, hill. He doesn't like me shooting at him, and he doesn't he doesn't want to come out yet. So that's that's fair. Um, Shooting his rockets um, have a really good target. Um, they're low piercing, but they are vicious. So my berserkers make quite the ideal target, and he gets quite a bit of damage, but they are inspired, so they're fine. So turn two, turn two. Um, humans look like this. Um, I move my knights up on the hill, I move my beast up, my general goes up. Uh, in the middle, I just move up again. I, I'm just... Staying outside of those range of those decimators. If he wants to keep shooting the rocket launchers at my berserkers, that's a okay. Um, I move my shield walls up to chaff up those uh, uh, grotesques or half breeds as much as I can. Uh, and on the other side, I'm pushing up as well. Um, just you know, getting up and getting to him. I'm not too scared about anything he has over here that badly. Um, so I just you know, just moving up and knowing. Knowing that I can slow him up. So, like, my general goes into those harpies, hoping to just waver it. Um, <clears throat> things like that. Um, shoot my warbow of Kaba at the other harpies. Harpies, or not harpies, gargoyles. Same thing. Um, I have a nice, really low nerve, so just trying to get them uh, spit it out a little bit. Um, we go into shooting, and my cannons go hog wild. Um, he doesn't have any inspiring over here. And the shot the caterpillar potioned. Um, thing or gr grotesques, and I pick them up. So pretty great, uh, pretty great off the start. And I think my general like fails to do any damage to these harpies. It was pretty bad. So um, that was all that happened. Nothing else of consequence for me. Um, Abyssal's turn two. He double charges my army standard bearer on the hill. He doesn't charge my general. Um, so I don't think he wants to get charged afterwards by berserkers on that side. Um, on this side, his half-breeds, one half-breed goes into the shield wall on the hill, and the other half-breed go into my, um, foot guard, which both are, both are fine with that. Um, and I don't have a, yeah, and then his, um, flyer does this, flies over and, um, gets ready to, to do some stuff, as you'd expect. Uh, shooting, he keeps shooting, he keeps shooting at my um, berserkers, which again is fine. Shoot at him all day. Um, the only thing is he fails to roll a six twice, so they're gonna hang out. Um, his half breeds do a pretty good amount of damage on my foot guard. Um, all things considered, they're it's a pretty good target for them, but it's a horde, so you're not picking them up with that. Um, but his foot guard on the hill, not surprisingly, pick up my shield wall. I see other abyssals too, so we go into turn three. Turn three for humans. Um, in the middle there, there's some obvious counter charges for me. The or charges or counter charges. Uh, the foot guard charge the abyssal half breeds. The pikes charge the other abyssal half breeds. Um, my general down on the left there charges the, charges his um, dragon guy. Um, and my everyone else just kind of moves up a little further. Again, I'm just standing. <laughs> I, th I don't think I think I got left the knights within 16 of the decimators this time because I wasn't too worried about it. But yeah, we're just moving up a little bit. Um, on this side, I he didn't kill my um, he didn't kill my what you might call it my flagger on the hill with his gargoyles. They really whiffed. Um, so my general goes into the back of the gargoyles, and then. My other shield wall goes into one of the other gargoyles. 
No, the same one, maybe. Yes. That sounds about right. Over here, my general gets a couple damage on his um, dragon guy, so that's that's great. He's not flying anymore. Um, in the middle, oh, I forgot to put the route symbols in there. Um, the foot guard were out there target, and the pikes were out there target, and nobody was surprised. Because that's, that's just what they do. They're pretty good at that. Um, yeah. And over here, yeah, we failed to do anything to these gargoyles. I think maybe we do a damage or something. It's pretty insignificant. So Abyssal's turn three. Um, his grotesque charge mod general, which is fine. Um, his harpies charge back into the things they were fighting on this side. His dragon guy counter charges my dragon guy. Or my, I don't have a dragon guy. His, his dragon guy counter charges my general. Um, I think that's most of the shooting. Or most of that moving. We move into shooting. He does put some damage on my knights, but they're fine. Um, over here, we're having a huge old pillow fight. I'm not killing him, and he's not killing me. Um, oh, I forgot another. Oh, never mind. So he does kill my flagger, and he does kill my general in this turn. Yep. So that's what it looks like there. Um, his general smacks, or his dragon smacks up my general pretty good, but my general holds out. I think he gets wavered, which is A-OK. -okay. Um, and you can see the other harpies, I forgot to mention, where they moved have flown over um, and are eyeing my cannons. So that's the end of turn three, looks like. Um, so overall board control, I'm feeling pretty good. I've got most of the things in my sight that I want. Um, so I'm not too worried about any of that. So turn four, uh, turn four, my knights go charging into his decimators. My beast of war goes and picks up one of the rocket launchers. Uh, my general just backs up there and both of my, uh, hordes, uh, pivot right and start moving to the other side of the board. Um, I'm getting a little confident here, so I don't think, I don't think that I'm going to need them. Uh, over here you can see the um, Berserker's Charge, I think it's Berserker's Charge, the uh, Abyssal Grotesques, but it's in the water and it's, yeah. you know, it's a thing. So, um, what happens as a consequence of combat, since I didn't take a picture of it, the Beasts of War fails to kill his target, the Knights fail to kill their target, and to no one's surprise, the, the Berserkers, I don't even know if they scratch those Abyssal Grotesques. They're pretty tough. So, um, yeah. So, big round of not really killing anything, but that's okay. Yep. So, uh, Abyssal's countercharging. Um, those harpies that were on the hill f flew over, I think. Um... His grotesques come to charge my berserkers, so they're kaput. Those other harpies, I think, are going to finish up the shield wall on the hill. Yes. And um, he charges my knights with one half-breed champion in the front, and then his general on the dragon in the rear. So those knights are not good position. Um... Not surprisingly, the uh, shield wall routes, and again, not surprisingly, well, yeah, not surprisingly, the, um, what are they called? Berserker's route. So that's what it looks like after that. Um, not surprisingly, the knight's route. Um, and that's what it looks like after that. The only thing to note is that um, he didn't get out of range with his overrun of my... Berserkers here. So, turn five. Um, turn five. I, this is a long-standing um, comedy section here for these these, uh, these gargoyles. Keep getting wavered, and I keep doing like one damage to them. So, that's funny for me. Um, we get a double charge here, a flank, and then a charge from the general on his dragon guy, which is great. Um, 
The Beast of War goes back into his target and picks it up, which is good. Um, not surprising that we pick up the dragon, which is great. Um, over here, we charge the harpies on the hill with the uh, foot guard just to get them out of the way, which is fine. And the pikes um, were not in range to charge those grotesques, so they just go stand in front of them. Which, again, that's fine too. Charge my pikes if you want. So just an overview of what it looks like after men five. Um, the archie boosters have also turned around at this point. Because um, I like to keep my artillery firing for a while. So they're, they and the wizard are now picking on those gargoyles. Um, turn five abyssals. He does something I didn't see. He walks his um, grotesques out of the arc of sight of my pikes. Um, my... foot guard are facing the wrong direction so they can't see them um, so here's another picture of what that looks like so instead of charging me in the front which probably wouldn't have been a good idea because he would have been hitting me on sixes because he was in the water it makes sense he goes around i didn't see that one coming um and in the middle up top there he charges my general with one of his half-breed champions and he charges my berserkers with his other half-breed champion he routes my berserkers um, and then he also routes my general. So, turn six. Um, turn six, uh, I march my foot guard over. Um, his, his abyssals can't see them. Or his grotesque can't see them. Um, so just in case there's a turn seven, at least I got that token right there. Um, my beast of war charges one of his half-breeds. Um, and over here, my pikes just move up to grab a token. Um, if there is a turn seven, they can pivot and get two tokens. Uh, otherwise, my, um, what is that called? The wizard and my archie boosters are just going to keep picking at that. Um, harp gargoyles there at the bottom. Uh, shooting my cannon do a, do a bit of damage to these grotesques, but we don't do enough to uh, take them out. Um, but I do hit these uh, gargoyles and they get wavered. Uh, my Beast of War fluffs like he always does. Uh, and this half-breed champion is just fine. So Abyssal's turn six. Uh, he double charges my Beast of War with his two half-breed champions. And he charges my wizard with his Abyssal Grotesques. That's oh, about that. Um... Uh, Screw tests, of course, pick up my... Oh, I missed one. Um, he did use the rockets, and he picked up my um, argue boosters down here on the left. Uh, but his grotesques pick up my wizard, and he overruns like that. Um, and his half-breeds champions pick up my beast of war. Um, he rolled pretty well for the nerve check. There's no one there to aspire. And we check if there's a turn seven, and there is not. So, um, here's what the board looks like at the end. Um, turned out to be quite quite the bloodbath um, overall. So, I mean, that's always a thing. I, I did end up with my blocks on the board, though, which is something I, I do try to do. Uh, so, the results. Uh, humans or kingdoms of man, I got two tokens, and the abyssal dwarves got zero. So, clear human victory. Um, I didn't write down what the adjustment was but it was something like a 17-3 it was not it was not as big of a like a win um points adjustment wise because he did pick up quite a few points there in that last turn um but you know otherwise still good um it was a fun game again my artillery uh performed quite well they picked up the three of them picked up a unit that is worth more than them easily in value and then just distracted people the rest of the game um they probably would have been done more but i was dealing with a lot of regen um so yeah and again like i said uh, the game was closer than i expected it it looked like it might have been a fun game off the start especially when i picked up those uh, grotesques uh, top of turn two um i understand some frustration from opponents on those sorts of things um, it's not always fun to use things without, you know, or not even getting to hardly move your models before they're taken off the board. So I fully understand that. But, uh, at the end of this though, it does put me in a very good position, uh, for this tournament. Um, next game I'll be playing on the top table. So, 
Um, I'll get around to making that maybe this week. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time.